Welcome back shop rats. Today here in the shop we are back on the Stitches Challenger. In our last episode we had gone through and did all of the fitment and cutting and flanging for this quarter panel. It's fitting nicely now but there's still a lot of prep work before we can actually install this quarter panel. So today we're going to go through and finish up some of that, share some of the details with you and get this thing ready to put it on the car. Remember that everything we do here doesn't just apply to the specific vehicle that we're working on, but can apply to any vehicle that you might be working on as well. Also know that I always know what I'm doing, but that doesn't mean it's the right way to do it. I only share the way I do things. Skills and techniques and ideas that I've accumulated over the last 40 years of doing this kind of work. So doesn't mean you need to do it this way, but maybe you can learn something from the way I do it. Even if it's to learn, you definitely don't want to do it that way. All right, let's watch the show intro. I'll see you in about 29 seconds. I'm Mike, and this is My Car's Shop. Working out of a 100-year-old refurbished barn, bringing 35 years of experience to projects considered beyond repair. Vision, creativity, and problem solving are the essential tools in this place. Watch as we transform junk into polished metal miracles. This is My Cars Shop. When I said we do it my way, I'm not kidding. Remember that all of the structural components of this car have been handmade out of a piece of 4x8 sheet metal. We've made two frame rails, we've made a trunk floor support, we have made a uh, trunk extension panel, uh, we've patched wheel wells, we've done a lot of work, all of it hand fabricated. And that's to just share with you that you don't have to necessarily go out and buy a ton of parts. In fact, I think we just did an episode talking about that very thing. We have things welded solid to here and not down to here. So the first thing we need to do is get out our grinder and go through and grind that up a little bit and then weld that up and get this edge done so that it's ready and solid. Um, I mean it's pretty solid as it is but it's only spot welded and I would much prefer to have that a lot tighter. So let's grind her up get her solid welded up. Just like that, many little spots and stitches, we're in good shape. So it's looking good, we have a solid mass all the way around. Um, one thing that I noticed when we had the quarter panel on there was I don't have as much engagement to the quarter panel lip as I might like. So we're going to do a little something here and see if we can uh, move this out just a little bit without screwing everything up here. It shouldn't be a big deal. We just need to put a little, I just want to get like a quarter inch more if I can. I don't know if we're going to get enough movement with this or not, but we're going to try with this clamp in there first before we go hydraulic. 
Looks like we're at about 14 right now, I think, from the lip out. Yeah, 14 and a quarter. Let's see if we can move it out to 14 and a half. It's about 14 and a half there, but it's, it's going to spring back. So we'll try to go a little more at the limits of what this thing can do, I think. I think it's just going in and out, not coming out anymore. Yeah, a little bit. So before we take the clamp out now, we'll get a metal persuasion device and just tap this to try to relieve this metal a little bit and see if it will help this just stay out a little bit that it, I think it needs to. I decided to try a little different way using just a body hammer first. Believe it or not, I think it actually did it. We'll know when we put the quarter panel back on, but I think we moved it about a quarter of an inch. Got it ground up again in the context of stitches. I'm not looking for it to be perfectly flush, blah, blah, blah. It's fine. I, I didn't even weld it on the other side. I can do that later if I want, but I seriously doubt I will. This is, I mean, you saw how hard I was pushing on that with that clamp and moved it out a quarter of an inch and nothing broke. So I am quite sure this is strong enough and good enough. Just took the nubs down on the welds just to make sure it doesn't interfere with the panel when the panel goes on. So next step is to fit the panel on there now and make sure that we've moved this lip out enough so I have a little bit more overlap for me to run my plug welds up in there. Just discovered that there's a weld right here that is impeding this panel going on. So uh, that's uh, good to just find that. We'll go ahead and get that ground out of the way and that'll help this slip on there. It's, it's actually causing the panel to twist a little bit, so glad I discovered that. Measured it into the frame at 17 inches and of course it tapers back in. Then we'll go that way. It's fitting nicely. My overlap is good. I had made that extra wide, but you can see I'm back to my black line lining up there now. Um, that wasn't lining up before right here. so. That moved that back out that quarter inch. I'm not sure what happened, but uh, I think it had to do with putting the panel in, and I might have been sucking it in a little bit too hard before. So I'm really liking that. Of course, we'll have to peen this flange out, but the next step now is to go around and mark where we want to put all of our plug weld holes and uh, before we take this back off. I did not put all of the Clecos back in, and that's fine. We don't need them all, but uh, we're going to put plug weld holes, you know, all along so I've got my snap punch which had been missing for a couple of weeks and we'll go around and get those marked out get this panel off of there because there's a couple more things I want to do in here before we put the quarter panel on permanently.
think we're ready to go ahead and shoot this. I, I either use bed liner or undercoating. You just want an added layer of protection in here if moisture should get in. Sometimes I'll also use rocker guard. We gotta hit it with one more coat of satin black because some of this is just bare primer. And as you've heard me say, ad nauseum, primer absorbs moisture. looking good we just need to let it dry so I'm gonna shoot in the house and get some lunch and then we'll come back out and shoot that with the bed liner and then while that's drying we will go ahead and get all of our holes drilled around the entire panel middle of the afternoon on a weekend and after the week I've had gotta have some coffee I normally only drink it in the morning and I normally only drink decaf, but I need the caffeine today, so. All right, this, uh, this is dried nicely. So we're gonna go ahead and shoot that on there. And then while that's drying, we have a couple things we're gonna do to the quarter panel itself in preparation for installation. Something I meant to do before I sprayed that on there was get up in here and clean the bottom of this and clean back in here. I'm going to let that go and do that after so that I don't mess all this up and get it all dirty. Of course, it's got to dry before I did it anyway. We'll go ahead and do a little of that before we put the quarter panel on. Maybe we'll hit this at the same time. I don't know. But we got that shot on there now. So let's go over to the quarter panel. We need to go through and drill all of our plug weld holes on this. And then we also need to go through and paint the back side before we install it. So, a fair bit of work to do here yet, that's for sure. That's, that's the thing I, I wanted to mention. I was thinking about it when I was uh, just in the house talking to Becky. And there is so much more work to installing a panel than you see in most channels. I'm not criticizing other channels, it's just you have no idea the, the sheer amount of work. You know, I have to go through here and drill 50 holes. Uh, we've got all that prep work to do there. We've got the back of the panel to paint. It's not just as easy as, um, well, we saw the last episode where we went through and trimmed and fit, trimmed and fit to get everything to line up right. Um, I don't know how many hours probably to hang a quarter panel. If I was back in production mode when I used to do this all the time, 10 to 15 hours, um, and that would be in a production environment where we're not dealing with fabricated parts. So, you know, maybe, uh, I don't know, 15 to 20 hours maybe to hang a corner panel, which isn't a huge amount of time. Um, but I just want you to have a realistic understanding of all of the steps that it takes to actually do something like this. So. Um, it's, uh, I think to me it gives you a greater appreciation for the amount of work and craftsmanship that goes into restoring a car that a lot of people just gloss over. Well, we got all of our eighth inch holes drilled. Now we gotta go through and drill our quarter inch or five sixteenths or whatever I decide to use there next. So lather, rinse, and repeat, as I say. Matter of fact, I often say lather, rinse, and repeat, and you can say lather, rinse, and repeat about my saying lather, rinse, and repeat, and, and we could say lather, rinse, and repeat about my saying that too. And,
go. 10,365 holes drilled. Just about the right size, hopefully all in the right location so there's something to weld to. Normally I would make those holes a little bit bigger in other situations. In fact, you'll see that I did that on the floor pan. Uh, remember there's no holes here because this is where it gets butt welded to the car. And these other holes are where our Clecos all go. But, looks good. I need to flip this over and do the other side. But just a note, notice all the metal shavings there. So get your blow gun, blow all that crap off and get your broom and sweep it off or whatever it is you do so that you don't scratch up the surface of your good panel. Now we got to go through and deburr. Oh, there's the panel right there. There's the maker and the part numbers. Used to be Sherman, it's another company now. Anyway, uh, go through and deburr all of that stuff and then do a little paint prep on the back of this thing and it so that it doesn't rust. It's a common mistake. Matter of fact, on one of the cars I did not that long ago, I forgot to paint the back of these quarter panels. Um, would it be the end of the world? No, but it's still better to have a layer of protective something on there so that it doesn't rust. Methinks the air hose is pinched. Methinks the air hose is pinched. Enough. We'll go through and uh, blow it off and then wipe it down with some prep saw and we should be good to go. Oh boy. So, got all of our little burrs gone and everything. So, hopefully, I didn't miss anything. Right on my chair. Before I paint it, I want to go through and grind all my edges down around so that I'm ready to weld. Then we'll flip it, paint the backside. But uh, I've already gone through and cleaned up the edges. But I need to get, you know, where all these bot weld holes are and along the edge because we're going to solid weld this. We need to get all that cleaned up. So lather, rinse, and repeat, right? ground up all the way around and I'm ready to rock and roll yeah so now we flip it over just gonna wipe the surface down one more time just to be sure and then we flip it over to uh, prep it we pretty much got it cleaned up already Feels good. Yeah, it feels real good. So we'll go ahead and shoot this with something so that it's protected and then we'll be ready to rock and roll. One thing I forgot to mention is just going ahead and scuffing this just a little bit so you get a little better adhesion. Doesn't need to be much. I'm gonna do it with my DA. Can't find it. One of the tools that walked about today, I guess. Every day there's a different tool. I think it's the day off, is what happens. 
and they don't they don't run it by me first they don't ask for time off they just take what they want i think my tools are a little bit entitled so it'll show up i was looking in the last episode for my red um wire or uh, tin snips and, and they showed up yesterday or last night i think it was actually after i was done filming it was, did I film yesterday? No, it was two days ago. Anyway, it doesn't matter. They showed up. So today must be the DA's day. I don't want spring to get here because this is when I do fabricating, but I really want spring to get here so I can pull everything out of here and get this place back under control. Just like that, it's been primed and it's been shot. So that's got to dry. So that's as far as we can go with that till that's dry. This is looking good. While I was waiting for the primer to dry, I went over here and got that taken care of so that uh, we don't have to fight down in the corner there with that quarter panel. So the quarter panel. I believe is ready to put on. I think we're ready to go ahead and put that quarter panel on. So that's got to dry. That'll take 24 hours. So that's going to do as far as we can go today. Big, huge strides in the last few weeks on stitches. I can't believe we're finally ready that all of our handmade parts are done. And you know, the frame rails are done, the trunk support's done, uh, the trunk extension is done, the wheel tub is done, the uh, uh, subframe connectors are done, the rear floor pans are done, and the, the structural integrity of this car is really, oh, the C pillar is done. The structural integrity of this car has come a long ways from what it was when we first pulled it out of my buddy's field after he got it from the junkyard. And uh, that's, that's huge. Um, once this is on, then... Uh, I think we're ready to go ahead, I'm, I'm, I'm like mind bottled about this too, that we're actually ready to go ahead and put that rear end up underneath it again, even if I just throw the seven and a quarter, which I probably will, um, because that's simple enough, otherwise I have to modify spring purchase to put the eight and three quarter under it, and I don't want to muck with that now. I do need to get the uh, second rear end, I got a, um, oh I think it's a B-body housing out back with a good center chunk in it. Uh, the e-body housing is stripped right now and sitting in the back room waiting hopefully the chunk in that one is good that's got a uh can't remember the gear that's in that 323 or 355 i don't remember now the diehards on the channel that remember all of that stuff last year probably can tell me but anyway we got to get that in here and uh, it's a 489 case i know that um, I think it was a 323 gear, the more I think about it. But I wanted the big heavy case because the, the one that was in, uh, not in this car, but in the e-body housing that I picked up was the 741 case, which is the smallest pinion. So anyway, I digress. But we are, wow, we're ready to put the quarter panel on. That's incredible. So yeah, the next steps will be get the rear end under it, um, tires on it. I believe and roll it back we'll get the 47 out of here and then we'll be pulling that old wide block v8 318 out of it and stripping the front suspension and lots of stuff to get it ready to put on the rotisserie so i gotta make some rotisserie adapters um the eastwood adapter or the eastwood rotisserie that was donated to the channel does not have any adapters that you can purchase which is fine because i'm broke anyway right now so we'll find some scrap metal i think i got a piece of three inch box tube over there that we can use i just got to find some like uh eighth inch plate or something like that to make the adapter plates to get it on the car also we've got some steel coming for the forsyth duster to build a crib to hold that car solid while i cut out that floor pan and we replace those inner rocker panels before we do the torsion bar cross member which is still sitting in the box right there so it's <coughs> it's always a moving target isn't it all right that's going to do it 
We're on the face thing. Instant grandma just loves us. We're over there at her house. And we're here on the U thing. Of course, you're watching My Car Shop. I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do that because that helps us. Drop comments, lots and lots of comments because that helps push us up in the algorithm. Smash that like button. That helps us a lot. And the most important thing you can do ever is rock.